I am inclined to think that uh, the scientific dictatorships of the future, and I think there are going to be scientific dictatorships in many parts of the world, will be probably a good deal nearer to the brave new world pattern uh, than to the uh, 1984 pattern. They will be a good deal nearer, not because of any humanitarian qualms in the scientific dictators, uh, but simply because the brave new world pattern is probably a good deal more efficient than the other. Uh, at that point, the non-biological intelligence that we create that year will be about a billion times greater than all biological human intelligence. There are a growing number, maybe a few hundred people, who are seeing the writing on the wall that these technologies are coming this century. And they will allow humanity, if, if we, you know, as human beings, as a species, if we choose, and it's, you know, it's a critical concept, if we choose, we could build godlike, massively intelligent machines with capacities, oh God, trillions of trillions of times above ours. I mean, they, they may reach a certain level of artificial intelligence where they themselves then start redesigning themselves, right? The singularity, that, that, that idea, when, when, when a certain level, a threshold level of intelligence is reached, and then it's no longer human beings who design the next generation. They do it. And they're doing it at the speed of light, electronically. So, <laughs> you know, up, up goes the, the AIQ very fast, and we just lose control. We just sit back and you know, watch, watch what happens. And, and they're the boss. 10, then you're human, but 11, you're not human anymore. If, if you have these nanobots, blood cell size robots in the brain that are actually have computers interacting with your biological neurons, is that still a human? Well, one nanobot's probably okay. How about 500 million nanobots? I don't know how people are going to stop this, although my hope is that when we effectively destroy half of human life on Earth through one technological mistake or another, or a combination of them, the diseases that we are allowing to come out uh, now, or the poisons that we create, or, or, or the global warming, one or another of these things, destroy half the population on Earth, the other half will say, whoa, we've gone too far. What do we do now? Humanity will become extinct, but in the sense of a pseudo-extinction, in that it is clear that if we are going to be altering our own biology and transforming ourselves, that we are going to change, and we're going to change in, in enormous ways, in very unforeseen ways. And that means that Homo sapiens, as we know it now, will cease to exist. But that's, that's got to be a form of madness. It's got to be a form of techno-blindness to want the end of the human species to, to transform it into a mechanical species. It's a kind of species side, you know, the, the, the destruction of a species against a kind of, I use the word, deicide, a god killing. If, if, if you choose not to build these artifacts, in a sense you're, um, you're removing the possibility of creating gods. It's, it's a, a kind of potential death of God. If you like. Now, which is worse? This is this is uh, 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 suicide. This is echo side. I think it has begun to sink in, and there are many that would say, "Stop! We've got to draw a line there." But it can't be stopped because this is a whole broad uh, front that is moving forward. If it, it's genetics, is one aspect of it. Computers are another aspect of it. Uh, communications are another aspect of it. Everything is changing about, li about life, and it's changing increasingly rapidly. Should we stop it? Should, should, should we sort of say, okay, AIQ, artificial intelligence quotient, at this level, we're going to legislate, perhaps even globally. That's the cutoff point. No robot, no artificial intelligence, no artelect, if you like, is allowed by law, by human law, to go beyond that. Do you think that's going to happen? <laughs> I don't. I don't think that's going to happen at all. It's missile technology. He said what? Who can bring me down? There is no 
human, there is no social, there is no governmental control over what these technologies are doing and will do. How are you going to stop trillions of dollars industry in building these, these godlike machines? You know, the, the robot industry, like the, the future Microsofts and Intels and so on in the 2030s, 2040s, I, I believe will be a artificial brain based and just enormous. A lot of people who do want to upgrade themselves, no question about that, and there'll be commercial interests and political interests supporting those groups. There's a lot of money to be made here, a lot of power. But I, I think when implants become more acceptable, as they are becoming bit by bit, so such people, the, the humanists that want to stay human, the, the Terrans maybe, as Hugo would call them, uh, they. I, I can't see them ultimately having much power because at the end of the day their intellectual capabilities will be so inferior to cyborgs, those that have implants and upgrades, that the cyborgs will be able to outthink the subspecies that still are human. So imagine uh, a young woman, she's just given birth and then she she needs to make the decision is she is she going to have her baby modified is she going to turn that baby into a, a cyborg or effectively an intellect so say she say she decides to do that so this you know, hypothetically this grain of sand in a sense that's been nanotech is uh, inserted into the human brain that baby's brain and it integrates itself into the brain so that baby in effect is no longer human so that woman, in a sense, has killed her baby. Killed in a sense, the baby's no longer human. It's effectively an artelect. It's an artelect in human disguise. Then if a machine is passing down signals that keep you completely happy, then why not be part of the Matrix? I, I really do think uh, Neo in the Matrix trying to destroy things, he's a bit of a party pooper and um, life for humans in a Matrix could be really cool. We are going to become gods. Period. If you don't like it, get off. You don't have to contribute, you don't have to participate. But if you're going to interfere with me becoming God, We'll have big trouble, and we'll have warfare. For one group, you'd be building gods. It's, it's just you know, amazing. It's, it's awe-inspiring. It's energizing, right? It, it's, it's setting a goal for humanity. There's the whole universe out there, right? You know, the big picture. And on the other hand, the potential risk of seeing the whole human species annihilated by, by these superior creatures who, who could just... way you could prevent me in this in this 50 or is to kill me and you kill me I'll kill you I'm anticipating the most passionate war that has ever been we're not talking about the survival of a, of a tribe or a people or a country we're talking about the survival of a whole species so so the passion levels will be extreme I deserve hell you deserve hell you have a seat Sir, the wrath and anger and vengeance. What are integrated? Well, that is the most tricky question. Are we going to retain the monkey meat? Are we going to hang on to the body and through the body have a connection to the rest of animal nature? Or are we going to become disembodied streams of electrons moving in virtual realities that are contained entirely in circuitry. I think this will probably go both ways. There will be fundamentalists who want nothing to do with technological transformation and there will be utopians who won't be able to get enough of it. This is probably the moral frontier where we each personally must make a stand. How much of the new technology and its reality redefining qualities do we want to take into our own lives?
post biological folks will say, you know, like, well, you people have a, a primitive atavistic attachment to the species. Let it go. Let it go. Come with us. We're the bold ones, okay? We'll move on to the, you know, that's really scary stuff. No, no, he's not hurt. He's asleep like the others. Cabell, safe! Cabell! Well done, Gordon! Well, they laughed at me for sticking to my gas mask, but thanks to that, I'm here and everyone else is sleeping. I wonder if they'll ever use gas masks again. Sir! Huh. What is it? This man's not sleeping. He's dead. Dead in his world, dead with him, and a new world beginning. Poor old Fox, he and his flags and his folly. And now for the rule of the air and a new life for mankind. <laughs> We have the unity of a common order and a common knowledge. This is how I conceive our plan of operations. First, the roundup of brigands. That last dismal vestige of ancient predatory soldiers. The last would-be conquerors. Then settle. Organize. Advance. This zone, then that. And at last, wings over the world. And the new world begins. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, October 28th, 2011. I'm Darko. Uh, my website is ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. Also, ddarko2012 is my YouTube channel. Go there and check it out. You can also check out on Facebook um, my Global Government News group. Okay, so hopefully this news, this uh, this second video will get posted onto YouTube. I don't know if they'll just reject it, but hey, it was worth a shot. And if I had to redo it, I have to redo it. But uh, it's for educational purposes, not for entertainment. So work from home, boss keeps off his staff on their toes with robot version of themselves. So that's great. Video game developers discovered a way to work from home while keeping an eye, close eye on his employees. So yeah, that's right. You can go in there and check that out. Of course, that's the future, getting rid of humans. IBM stimulates 4.5% of the human brain and all the cat brain. So basically, IBM is trying to create this supercomputer, a fast uh, supercomputer that is uh, highly compact. Then we have this dying dog clone for $100,000. You know, I thought about this because my dog's nine years old. You know what? There will only be one Boots. That's my dog. There's always going to be one Boots. I adopted him. He's the cutest, lovest, loving dog I've ever seen and met. He's the bestest friend. But when he dies, he dies. I'm not going to clone him. It's because it's, it's not going to be him. And uh, also, with the, with the, as far as taking on all these uh, upgrades and limbs and stuff like that, um, you know, if you should be dead, you should be dead. You know what I'm saying? So that's my that's kind of that's more the fundamentalist uh, view or philosophy, right? That's where the divide is. Is uh, basically, if you go in, you take that stuff. Whereas you were you were supposed to die initially. Now you're living. Well, you're you're a living dead person. So you're pretty much soulless like this drone is going to be. Moving on here, iRobot becomes a reality as man gets smartphone built into his artificial arm. It's crazy because you see so many of these young people now, they pretty much do have these smartphones built into their arm. They carry them around with them so much that they never leave their arm. It's like an extension of themselves. Brain scanner reads people's dreams accurately enough to see what they are dreaming about. It says here that scientists predict that we could soon use computers to see, in other words, they have that technology now, uh, we could see what we have dreamed about and perhaps even record dreams to watch them the next day. Of course, that's what? That's DARPA, and these are all the big brother government, the scientists, the scientific dictatorship that's, uh, you know, looking for dissenters. It says here, psychiatrists at the Max Institute, Germany, think they've already demonstrated that brain scanners can see into the dream of lucid dreamers, people who can control their dreams. That's interesting because I remember I mentioned before about uh, invasions of my dreams and how, the, how I use my own protection because I can notice when, uh, when they do enter my dreams. Twin balloon airship reaches space. So remember, we're talking about the high altitude airship. It's pretty much its brother uh, talking about. And lastly, Boeing sees uh, growth in cyber despite defense cuts. Of course. Of course. It, I, I've already mentioned this, that defense cuts aren't going to do shit to these companies, defense contractors and pharma companies and banking companies. They don't, they don't, they, I don't need to go into it. This is GGN. I'm Darko. Thank you.